Hey guys, it's Chris, and uh, today we're gonna do an unboxing video. Oh man. Oh. GVP discs, whole oh, bunk. Oh. <laughs> so inside we got some GVP discs. Fast prep. Uh, no version. A smashed one that says GVP plus fast prep, another fast prep, an IO extender for a GVP Series 2 500 with the warranty card. Guess I should fill that out. So, we got oh, oh several things in here. I'm going to put the box down and we'll go through it. So, we'll pop it on top of 2000 here. Yep, still working on. So this looks like all right. A one with a hole in it. Some loose screws. It's a GVP uh, Impact Series Two Amiga 500 uh, hard drive controller with a little off on, and it looks to be in pretty rough up shape. The screws are all loose to missing. Pop the cover off here so we can see just what we got. We got has a little fan underneath that's unplugged. Uh, very dirty. No, uh, has some memory and it looks like 4 megs. Uh, 3.07 ROM. Very, very dirty. Uh, 50 pin hard drive cable. Well, that's one of them. I said it's in uh, pretty rough shape. Here's another one. We got a second one in the batch. This one is in much better condition. Solid. Uh, as you can see, there's no hole cut in it. Another GVP Impact SCSI controller. The lid off of this one. Fan is in better shape. Hard drive light is intact. The jumper settings on the board. Four megs on board, SCSI controller, and the metal plate. So this one's in a lot better shape. It smells really bad. It does have the uh, riser board for the I/O. 50-pin hard drive cable. No hard drive, so we will be putting a hard drive in it. And of course, the old big bulky GVP external power supply. That stinks really bad. So only one power supply and two GVP boards. Has a standard four pin DIN that most likely should go on the back. Yep. So we're gonna remove the 2000 here and uh, get the 500 out and see what we can make happen. Stay tuned. Get 2000 down. We got the 500 uh, booting up Workbench 2.1. Has a 2 ROM, 2.1 ROM, uh, one mega chip RAM, nothing else. So we know that works. We don't know the status of this thing, so I'm not going to put the cover on it right now. This is the one without the hole in it. Um, I also let's turn the uh, 500 off. So we have to open up the side caddy door here, which hasn't been removed in ever. Okay, so there's the support mount underneath. It's inserted. It goes flush. Uh, what I'm going to do before I get into this is we're going to energize this power supply. Scuzzy hard drive. Scuzzy, scuzzy hard drive. It was a Quantum LP52S. It's Workbench 3.1. Worked fine in February. It's a mega hard drive, but it's 3.1. Well, shit me. Let's turn the uh, Amiga on. Power supply wasn't putting out. 
2.0 ROMs. Okay, well, we have power. Here's the hard drive. Let's boot off of a disk. We're going to boot off of install. The V scroll is a little bit off on my. Oh, that's wonderful. Come on. Ah, uh, poop. Well, that ain't good. Not good. Not good at all. Okay, no, yes. It's asking if I want to run fast prep or I chose expert prep. <coughs> well, at least it works. Jumper on here for a switch that tells it gamer auto boot. So I have to put this on. then reboot. Alright, well that don't work, so let's flip this little switch. Okay, that switch works because now it's booting off the floppy. Damn, V-hold. Nothing. 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 Oh! Aha! Look at that. Quantum 49. It's on ID number 3. So, I have the switch in backwards. All right, but I'm not going to kill this drive. So, turn it off, turn it off, put the switch in the correct way. Boy, that, they use like the thickest wire possible. All right, let's get another drive that I can destroy and not give a hoot about. This says DH5, ID number two, no files. It's nice to have a 500 with a hard drive again. Alright, we're going to just sit this back here, and I'm just going to turn it on. Hard drive spinning out. There's no light here. I have to figure the hard drive light out. Okay. Oh, I forgot to hook this stupid jumper up. I don't know why somebody would cut a hole in this. Did they think they were cooling it? I really don't know. This one's in really crusty shape. Really crusty shape. I have to look at the uh, configuration. There's some cardboard wedged in it. I don't know what it is. Two. ID two. DH five FFS. So we're gonna make it DH zero. DH zero. FFS. Uh, Five hundred and twenty megs. One partition. We're going to go to page two. It is bootable. There's boot, mount, or no mount. So we're going to choose bootable. Max transfer. I'm not touching because this is an unaccelerated 500. Uh, we're going to choose either for the buffer type. 520 megs. We're going to write this setup. Yes, proceed. Hard drive light blips. This hard drive light does not work. I don't know why. Proceed. And then we're going to quit. I'm going to try a load workbench just to see if the RAM is working. And it is. It looks like it has four megabytes on board. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I just want to give you the overshot of the whole thing. Uh, so the memory works. It has four megs, and here's my DH5 with a trash can and nothing on it. So I am going to install Workbench 2.1 LP52S ID0. Uh, I did put a jumper over this little thing because apparently that's the auto boot thing and I'm going to load the GDP software and we're going to wipe this disk and get a fresh install of Workbench to HD zero. That's funny.
DH0. Fast file system. Boot priority. Negative 10. Uh, no. Wow, the ugly orange of Workbench 1.3. Hello, Richard. Remember, if you sell me, Chris is going to kill you. Unset, unset, unset. I must have made a custom disc for someone named Richard. That's funny. Alright, so I don't even see it. On the PC, I loaded Amiga Explorer. I'm copying the, the seven minutes remaining on 19.2 baud over a USB to serial cable. So we're copying the uh, install.adf to RAM. It's at 4 meg, so it should be working. And we're also going to copy the program to write the ADFs. So we're still copying. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. I'm actually writing it to DH0 here. You can see the hard drive flickering. Remember, it's only a 52 meg hard drive, so this is going to be like nothing, uh, nothing crazy. So since DH0 is functional, I'm copying it to DH0, and I had to lower the ball to 38 or increase the ball to 38.4. I tried 57.6, but 38.4 is the maximum the serial port can handle. Alright, so 2.1 is loaded. We're not going to see it. I could show all files. So there's the 2.1 ADF. We're also going to copy ADF Blitzer and the info. That one at least is quick. Oh, look at the lag, mouse lag when I'm clicking. And while I'm at it, I'm going to copy the Amiga Forever, or Amiga Forever, the uh, Amiga Explorer. Ta-da! Okay, so this pooped out, so I'm going to reboot. Okay, so small update. I'm using the new Go ADF, uh, bitplan.pl slash Go ADF. It's a 2019 program, so I have the the uh, I have the ADF in DH0. It's going to write install 2.1, write ADF to disk. Yes. Gives you a block by block. What's going on? It's a pretty nice program. First time I've actually had a need to use it. You can also mount virtual floppies for ADFs, so check it out. Okay, so this is finished. I should have an install 2.1. We're going to toggle back, close this, install 2.1. Awesome! Hey, behold. Alright, so we're going to take install 2.1 out. We're going to put another floppy in. Hopefully it's blank. Hey, what's going on? What's up? Alright. So this one's blank, definitely. I'm, and this is a nice option. So, we're going to go uh, back back. How do I go back? So that's a problem. Yes I do. So basically here's what happens. You choose the directory. So I'm going to choose DH0. It's the place where my things are. So I need to write fonts also. So we're going to choose fonts. You double click on it. It loads this and you say ADF to disk. And you choose the disk, and you say format disk. Write ADF to disk. It will erase. Formatting. So I know Workbench works. This is a fresh install and a fresh fonts. Okay, so there we go. There's no menu bar on this, so you can't, you're done. You're just done. So now it's been running twice. There's the install, there's fonts. Unless I just can't see the button, that is a possibility.
I don't think I have screen mode in here. Yeah, no. Okay, so here we go. Install 2.1. Bench 2.1. I'm gonna reboot. Hard drive light is uh, doing its thing here, and we are rocking with DH0, a Quantum LP52S SCSI hard drive from long ago. So now, let's see what we can do as far as resolution. Oh my god, this is slow. I'm so used to the... Oh, it doesn't have cleanup. There it goes. There's no hotkey of right Amiga period. Oh. CRTs, man, there it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 Save. colors. I doubt it. I'll do eight. Rock on. So that's it. There's nothing in here except the ADF Blitzer and let's see now that I have a overscan resolution. ADF Blitzer will now work. That's a quick program I use to choose an ADF file. Like if I wanted to write fonts I say okay and then I choose I choose which disk by right clicking and choosing the DF0 to DF1. So that's why I like ADF Blitzer, but it does require a goofy font, so it can't save your bacon in the need of uh, like what I had. So we're going to use directory works here because it's a quick and dirty. And there's that go ADF. But the go ADF info is like hidden for some reason. So we're gonna grab its directory here. We're gonna add an icon, which is on this side, add icon. So now when I update, I'll actually have a go ADF icon right here instead of doing the show all. And then we can see the program. And there it is. Snapshot all. So that saved the bacon. It took a while. I apologize for the length of this video. But. Yep. Four megs of RAM. I don't think I have sysinfo on this device. But we know what it is. It is a. Oops. EMD CLI. We know it is Amiga 500. Now with this uh, GVP Impact Series 2, uh, 500 HD Plus, as well as this dual pole switch. So from the back of the switch, it looks like there's only one set of jumpers. So if you're on the left-hand side, it cuts the jumper uh, right here. There is a jumper here that states the. Uh, auto boot sequence so by removing this jumper it will not boot off the hard drive but that is the same as sliding this switch over to game switch when you slide auto boot it closes this thus jumping the connection and boom so I guess it does not matter which way you put it on so everyone Thank you for watching this extended video on saving the the GVP here. 
and uh, apparently it works fine. I will have to go over the capacitors and replace them. There are three axials, four axials, I'm sorry, and we'll be updating that, cleaning it up, and testing the RAM with some utilities now that I can get it back online. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, like, share. Feel free. And uh, we'll do some more Amiga 500 videos now that we have a hard drive and we can do some more stuff. So thanks for watching. Take care.